Lake Sumter State College and LSTV are proud to present now live from the Everett A. Kelly Convocation Center, the 2019 Leesburg Campus Spring Commencement Ceremony on Lake Sumter State College Leesburg Campus. Join us as we recognize and celebrate the academic accomplishments of this class of graduates.
please be seated. Welcome, friends, trustees, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, students, and most importantly, our students and their families to the 60th commencement ceremony of Lake Sumter State College. I am also pleased to share that Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, also sends his greetings and congratulations to each of our students. This spring, we will confer over 600 technical certificates and degrees from Lake Sumter State College. Our students will join over 112,000 students who will graduate from one of the 28 colleges of the Florida College System this year. Students, each of you have made a personal commitment, commitment and sacrifice to completing a rigorous program of study at a college regarded as one of the best in the nation and one of the best in Florida. This week we will also reach an impressive milestone. The 50,000th Direct Connect UCF graduate will be a Lake Sumter State College student named Hannah Holbrook. Hannah is, at this moment, is walking across a graduation stage at UCF this week, proudly representing both Lake Sumter State College and the University of Central Florida. Direct Connect is a national model for successful transfer programs. We are proud to be one of the original partner colleges and look forward to many more graduates to come. To all of our students, this celebration is in your honor, and it is the grand finale of your final semester at Lake Sumter State College. Everyone here today is proud of your hard work, perseverance, and commitment to learning that will improve your life, the lives of those you care for, and the communities that surround you. Please join me in giving our students a round of applause. We are honored to have many distinguished guests with us here today to celebrate your graduation. Please let me begin by introducing the platform party. Please hold your applause until everyone has been inter introduced. Platform party. Mr. John Shea, Associate Professor and Faculty Marshal. Mr. Pete Wall, Chairman, Board of Trustees. Board members, Mr. Bren Blaze, Mrs. Marsha Butler, Mrs. Jennifer Hill, Mrs. Jennifer Hooten, Mr. Brett Jones, and Mr. Tim Jordan. I'm sorry, Mr. Tim Morris. Mr. David Jordan, Lake Sumter State College Foundation. Ms. Kathleen Stempion, today's commencement speaker. Mr. Jeffrey Parody, Jr., today's speaker. Dr. Douglas Weimer, Vice President, Academic Affairs. Dr. Heather Bergard, Vice President, Administrative and Financial Services. Dr. Claire Brady, Vice President, Enrollment and Student Affairs. Mr. Tom Kieft, Associate Vice President, General Education. Dr. Laura Bird, Associate Vice President, Institutional Advancement and Executive Director of the late Sumter State College Foundation. And Ms. Amber Carlins, Instructor of English. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you. Please be seated. I would also like to recognize, recognize our special guests, supporters, and hardworking members of the college's legislative delegation. Mr. Bob Durand, Commissioner Wendy Breeden, Representative Brett Haig and his wife Candace, Dr. Diane Culpepper, Ms. Lori Davis, Mr. Jerry Miller, Isabel Nieto, and Audrey Lewis. And please, if there's somebody that I've missed, please stand for recognition. Please give all of these supporters a round of, your, a round of applause. <laughs> Lake Sumter State College is especially proud of the brave women and men who have served or are serving in the armed forces. Would all active and retired military personnel, veterans, National Guard and reservists, Please stand to be recognized so we may thank you for your service. Thank you. More than 60% of our students need some type of financial aid to complete their academic programs. 
Thanks to the generous support of local community members, business partners, alumni, and employees, the Lake Sumter State College Foundation is able to provide more than $500,000 each year in scholarships. Students and audience members, please stand if you have benefited from a Lake Sumter State College Foundation scholarship or, or if you have financially supported the foundation. Thank you, students and supporters. Our dedicated faculty provide instruction to our students and create dynamic learning environments that support student learning and growth. Our faculty are committed to their academic disciplines, to excellence and innovation in teaching, and to serving the unique needs of our students. At this time, I would ask that members of the Lake Sumter State College faculty please stand and be recognized. Thank you. I would like to recognize the college staff who work tirelessly to help our students navigate the college experience, develop career and professional skills, and successfully complete their academic programs. Our staff is deeply committed to the success of each and every student. Will members of the Lake Sumter State College staff please stand and be recognized? Finally, students, let's take a moment to say thank you to family, friends, and loved ones who provided support and encouragement throughout your journey. Please join me in giving a round of applause to your supporters in the audience and those who could not be here today. It is now my pleasure to invite Mr. Pete Wall, Chairman of the Lake Sumter State College District Board of Trustees, to come to the podium for his remarks. Good morning, class of 2019. You made it. On behalf of my fellow members of the District Board of Trustees, I'm excited to be one of the first to congratulate you on achieving your dream here at Lake Sumter State College. I want to break from my script here for a second and ask the graduating class to stand up now. Turn around, try to make eye contact with your friends and family, and give them a big round of applause for all of the work they've done to get you here. Okay, you may, may be <laughs> seated again. This is certainly an exciting time to be part of the Lake Sumter State College our mission is ambitious. Anyone who lives in our area can tell you that Lake Sumter State College provides you with a high quality education, the, the high quality education that prepares you for your next step. For some, that next step is, is immediately to enter the workforce. For others, it's to continue toward your four year degree and beyond. I'm proud that this college is recognized as one of the top colleges in the state of Florida and the nation. I know from experience that employers in Lake and Sumter counties and beyond are looking for skilled and well-educated employees like each of you. The critical thinking schools, skills, problem solving skills, and strong written and oral skills and, and communication that you've learned here will become valuable assets to you as you begin your careers. My challenge for you today is to leave here ready to follow your passion and make an impact. Today, it's your turn. Just as your diploma required hard work and dedication, your success in the next step of your journey requires the same thing. 
take that next step. I assure you that we are with you all of the way. Your success is our success. We're rooting for you, class of 2019. Thank you. Good morning, honored guest. Today's student speaker, Jeffrey Parody Jr., was nominated by faculty and staff to serve in this role. He was then selected from a field of his peers to address you as this spring's student commencement speaker. Jeffrey is a poet, a writer, and an artist, and he will graduate today with an associate in arts degree. Jeffrey is a member of Phi Theta Kappa, was published in the Odyssey magazine, and served as a speaker for TEDx LSSC. Jeffrey credits Amber Carlins, Alexandra Guzman, Kevin Arms, Brenda Scachellis, Isaac Dees, and Heather Almadi as faculty and staff who have made a difference in his student experience. Jeffrey grew up with a neuromuscular disease called muscular dystrophy Duchenne's. Throughout his life, he progressively lost the ability to walk, stand, lift his arms, and breathe on his own. He went into heart failure and had a heart transplant in 2007. In 2013, he went into respiratory failure and was permanently placed on a ventilator. When his medical team at Tampa General, led by Dr. Hoffman, learned that Jeffrey would be our student speaker, they asked to share some insights into who Jeffrey is. They shared that Jeffrey leads his life with grace, poise, and an amazing smile on his face, and a glitter in his eyes, and that Jeffrey is an inspiration to all who meet him. Most importantly, they shared they are honored to be part of his life. Jeffrey was recently accepted as a mentor at Tampa General Hospital for pediatric transplant patients. His plan for the future includes becoming an advocate for people with disabilities, writing a book, completing a bachelor's degree, and pursuing many artistic endeavors. Please welcome your student commencement speaker, Jeffrey Parody, Jr. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2019. Please, let's give them a big round of applause. For some, this may be your first degree, like myself, or your second degree, but what a journey it has been. It's hard to believe that not, lo not so long ago, we were just starting out as strangers to this college experience, wondering how we would even get by. College is not something achieved alone. Without our family and friends supporting us, encouraging us, and helping us to overcome obstacles, we would never have been able to get through college. However, let us also give thanks to the faculty and teachers for guiding us to success. They are an extraordinary group of individuals. Thinking about how many hours they put in to help us succeed and help us discover our talents is absolutely remarkable. Personally, I can honestly say, without these teachers, I wouldn't be up here today, and we couldn't have achieved our educational goals. They have encouraged us to become more confident they never gave up on us, even if we doubted ourselves. And they believed we could achieve anything. Whatever we do in the next phase of our lives, I am confident we can conquer anything thanks to the faculty and teachers of this college. Please, let's give them a round of applause.
I now want to share with you my college experience and the perseverance it took to graduate. I remember it so vividly. There I was lying in the hospital bed, waiting to hear what was going to ha happen next. I had just finished my first term when it was once called Lake Sumter Community College. I remember that fall, that fall term in 2006. Every morning waking up, coughing up gunk from my lungs, going to the doctors and trying to get through the term. It was the last week, finals, and I was getting worse. I said to my mom, I can't fail my finals. I promise I'll go to the hospital after. I had no idea I was in stage four heart failure. So I passed my finals and my classes. But the next day, I was sleeping in the front yard because I had one outside in my wheelchair with my fingers and lips turning blue while my mom frantically called the doctor. In that same week, I was admitted to South Lake Hospital. My mom came into the room and told me, you need a heart transplant. I responded, I don't have time for that. I need, I need to finish my college and get my degree. She said, no, you don't understand. You need a transplant, a heart transplant or you're going to die. So eventually, I was transferred to Tampa General Hospital where I was stabilized and then sent home to await a call for a heart. Six months later, on June 28, 2007, I received my heart transplant. I was feeling like a new man at only 19 years old and excited to return to college the following year in 2008. However, because of the progression of my muscular dystrophy, Duchenne's, I began dropping books, my pencils, and my phone on my 15-minute wheelchair drive from home. Because I couldn't go to college by myself anymore, I finished the term and I quit going to college. My thought was, if I couldn't go to college by myself, then I wouldn't go. Can you imagine going to school with your mom? <laughs> well, five years had passed, and my muscular distribution had progressed so far that I couldn't paint, play video games, draw, or write anymore. The worst part was that I went into respiratory failure on July 12, 2013. Again, I was in the hospital fighting for my life. This time, I didn't know if I would be able to eat or talk again. Almost two months later, I was home, eating and talking. On a ventilator, I was left to ponder a lot of thoughts on why I'm here. What makes my life special? What can I do? I still don't know the answer, but like Eleanor Roosevelt said, the purpose of life is to live it, to taste experience to the utmost, to reach out eagerly and without fear for newer and richer experiences. I decided you can either get busy living or get busy dying. I decided to get busy living and I had hoped college would open new doors. So I sucked up my pride and had my mom come to college with me. And here I am, six years later, graduating. Through my time at Lake Sumter State College, I learned to paint again with my mouth, play games using a mouth-operated video game controller. And I learned that my writing is good enough to be published thanks to Lake Sumter State College Odyssey magazine and never in my wildest dreams did I believe that I would be a TEDx speaker at the school. I tell you my story so that you can learn from my experiences, to have the confidence to believe that you are meant for greatness. Graduating students of 2019, understand my story Think about my life, hear my message, and know that it is not 
Only the people who move fast like succeed, but the ones who persevere, the ones that keep getting up, the ones that don't give up without a fight. Now I would like to read a poem I wrote that kind of puts us together for our graduation. Ravaged by the savage seas, we wrecked upon the shifting sands of creation beyond the echo of our pleas. Still the storm, unrelenting, pushed us to our limitations. We faced the beast head on, yelling out our battle cry of unyielding determination. Thrashing its power about, we charged on. We fell, got up, and fell again, learning to persevere. With experience, we fought on. With a strike to the heart, a light appeared. The storm waned and faded away. Ships sailed to shore and expressed revere. Through the storm, we got back up and challenged our fate. Through our trials, we fought the beast and conquered our fears. And that's the end of the poem. Failure is not an option. We may fall down, we make it hurt, we may even lose hope. However, like Leonardo DiCaprio says in The Revenant, you have to fight, but don't you give up as long as you've got a breath left in you. Whatever happens in your life, never let anyone tell you what you cannot do. Never let someone tell you your limitations, and never let someone tell you how long you will live. What's meant to be, will be. Basically, don't be afraid of the future. Until then, keep surviving, keep thriving, and always reach beyond the stars. Keep pursuing your dreams, and remember, nobody can take away your knowledge. As long as you have knowledge, you can achieve anything you put your mind to. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. You are truly an inspiration to all of us. Dr. Sidor, students, faculty, staff, and all of our honored guests today, it's my privilege to introduce you to our commencement speaker, Catherine Stempion. Catherine is the president of Duke Energy Florida and has 25 years of experience in finance and legal fields. She earned a Juris Doctor degree from Boston University and a Bachelor of Arts in Government from Dartmouth College. She also completed a London School of Economics program in Comparative Political Studies and participated in the Advancement Management program at Harvard Business School. Prior to her roles with Duke Energy, Catherine practiced law, first in private practice and then in-house counsel in the tele telecommunications and energy fields. Catherine is committed to promoting a diverse workforce, leveraging technology for the greater good and meeting the workforce needs of the future. Catherine, your personal and professional journey, coupled with your commitment to education and serving communities in need, will serve as an outstanding inspiration to our graduating class and their guests. We now invite you to address our audience. Thank you. I'm not sure that I'm going to be any more inspirational than Jeff, so I'm not even going to try. But I do want to thank Dr. Bagard for your kind introduction, and additional thanks to Dr. Sedor, Dr. Brady, Sumter Lakes Board of Trustees, parents, faculty, for such a warm welcome today. And graduates, you're the reason why I'm here, because today is all about you. 
There are a few days in your life that you'll remember as much as your graduation day. Most of you won't remember the specifics of today, including these remarks. But you will remember the day. The fact that you completed a lot of hard work to get here and that you're celebrating, hopefully with loved ones and friends around you. I'm delighted and honored to be here today with my sincere congratulations and a few words of wisdom as you launch into the next phase of your personal journey. Now, wisdom is often a code word for old. It was almost 30 years ago that I was in your shoes, listening to some old person give me their words of wisdom. And at that time, I could not have imagined the career, the industry, and even the state in which I live today. And if you are anything like me, you're eager to be on your way. You're eager to start the next phase, eager to get to the graduation post party. But one of life's important lessons is patience. So I will ask you to indulge in some patience. Life already goes very fast. So take time to listen and you might pick up a nugget or two from today's ceremony. Now first, to prove that I'm not an old person, I actually need you all to do something for me, okay? I'm gonna get out my phone here. We'll get this open. Bear with me, okay, because I'm gonna try something out here. I'm opening my Snapchat account. <laughs> and what I wanna do is I actually wanna post a little selfie. So can I get the graduates to stand? Okay, here we go. Let's see if this can work. Okay, here we go. Everybody wave. Picks or it didn't happen, right? <laughs> so I'm going to post this to my Snapchat story right now. Here we go, my story. I'll send it to my daughter as well, a couple friends. And even maybe after this, I'll tweet it out, right? You can all follow me on Twitter. Do you think at my graduation 30 years ago, Anybody was snapping or tweeting and posting? In just 30 years, how our methods of communication have changed in ways we could not have imagined. Thomas Edison invented the light bulb in 1879. Within three years of that invention, he built the equivalent of the first utility, the first company to generate and deliver electricity to customers. Fast forward to about 10 years ago. If Thomas Edison were put in a time machine from that very first invention, fast forwarded about 130 years, he would not have seen a heck of a lot of change in the way we produce and deliver electricity or in the makeup of our workforce. But oh, how merely a decade can make a difference. We're seeing fundamental changes in the energy world, and we're pushing ourselves hard to keep up with that changing technology. Today, we have technology that enables power outages to fix themselves, poles and wires that can withstand powerful storms, and we're installing smart meters that will eventually tell us when your power is out. We're also harnessing the power of the sun so that all homes and businesses can benefit from solar energy. These developments scratch the very surface of how technology in the energy industry is changing. And it isn't just energy. When I went to law school, the internet, or what was then called the World Wide Web, hadn't even been invented. I know, seems crazy, right? Yet within five years of my graduation from college, I was then working in telecommunications in the burgeoning field of internet law. The law I practiced was not even taught when I was in law school. Yet the technologies of today, like smart meters, solar panels, will eventually be remembered the same way I remember 8-track players, floppy disks, and marveled at my 512K computer. Ask your parents about all those. As I look out at this group of graduates, what do I see? 
I see a potential workforce who's going to be working with technologies that have yet to be invented and solving problems that today seem to be insurmountable. Someone here today might very well be the driving force behind a solution that could change our future. And I warn you, the same way I was a little clunky using my iPhone to snap and tweet, you will feel the same way maybe 10 or 20 or 30 years from now when some undiscovered technology sweeps across our culture. And when that moment hits you, just remember that old lady at your graduation trying to keep up with the times and embrace your new technology. You are in demand. I can confirm that based on my firsthand experience. Duke Energy alone is seeking to hire hundreds of new linemen within our service territories. Graduates in this very room, thanks to the degrees you've earned right here at Lake Sumter, will be helping us build a smarter energy future and will experience changes in the energy industry firsthand. Others of you will go on to different fields in areas that will also see change and innovation. But for all, there are a few life lessons that I've learned from my 20 years in the energy industry that I think we can all relate to. So indulge me in a few energy puns. So number one, know your power. Your personal power is made up of a lot of things. It's your education, your technical skills, your proficiencies, your competencies, but it's also what makes you unique. Your personality, your background, your family. We each have strengths and weaknesses. Both make up your power. I used to think I had to get rid of all of my weaknesses. They were, they were things that held me back. But real power comes from living within your strengths, but recognizing your weaknesses. Not necessarily getting rid of them, but knowing where they hold you back from becoming the best you. And sometimes pushing yourself beyond those weaknesses, finding creative ways to supersede them. There's a special power that comes from pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone and mastering something new. Your personal power also comes from the mistakes you make, and you will make mistakes. Mistakes are certainly uncomfortable. We don't want to repeat them, but forgetting them is always a mistake. So acknowledge your mistakes, learn from them, and move on. Now, I, number two, I didn't hear Jeff's speech beforehand and his poem, but it is so apt because number two is face the storms. Storms in the energy industry are our biggest tests and our biggest challenge. We head into the storm while others take shelter. Facing the storm, no matter how dire the forecast, is our job. And I have witnessed tremendous bravery among our employees as they leave their families and they head into the storm. Your future storms may not include hurricane force winds, but they may seem as dire, overwhelming, and insurmountable. In those moments, dig deep and stand tall. Remember your personal power. Be confident that you have what it takes to face the storm head on. Because sometimes trying to hide from the storm just sets you back further than heading straight into it. Every storm passes, and with each passing storm, you grow stronger, more experienced, and better able to withstand the next. Lesson number three, expect to rebuild. Facing the storm is one thing. What really inspires me is how at Duke Energy we rally together to respond after the storm has hit. And we go to restore power and, when necessary, to rebuild. After the devastating impacts of Hurricane Michael and the Panhandle last fall, our team did what many thought were, it was impossible. They rebuilt the entire electric system in Mexico Beach and Port St. Joe in three weeks. When the first street light illuminated in Mexico Beach, that light literally caused faces to shine brighter, giving hope to thousands. Hope that they had power, both personally and electrically, to rebuild their lives. 
When you face your own storms, there may be damage that requires rebuilding. When a job or a relationship, an idea, or something we really counted on succumbs to one of life's storms, what do you do? The act of rebuilding can seem daunting. When some houses are left with only a slab of concrete, and other houses are picked up off their pilings and moved to the middle of streets, when poles are snapped in half and wire is dangling everywhere, how and where do you start? You assess the situation, put a plan together, and you start. Do the same with your personal storm. Assess the damage, what worked, what didn't work, and what could you have done differently. Then shift your focus, put one foot in front of the other, and build something better and stronger. You can accomplish things you never thought possible. Trust yourself and move forward. Number four, stay grounded. By nature, electricity seeks to return its electrons to ground. That's why, for safety's sake, everything electrical needs grounding. Any electrician or lineman in training already knows that improper grounding can be very dangerous. There's a different type of energy that's generated with success. You should feel energized when you land that job, get that promotion, earn that raise, and climb the ladder of success. Just never forget where and how you began. Staying grounded means staying grateful and remaining connected to those you know and who love you for exactly who you are today. And finally, brighten the space around you. So I'll wrap this one up. It seems when your job is literally includes keeping the lights on, this one seems like an easy one. But I'm really referring to our responsibility to each other. Regardless of your chosen field, it's never solely about a task or a product. Inevitably, there's a purpose aligned with whatever you make or produce that includes people, people and communities, lifting each other up helping those who need it, and sharing what you know with those who want to learn. Use your unique power to brighten the space and people around you. I thank you again for the privilege of being here today to celebrate your great success. Take your pics, post your tweets, scroll through your friends' Instagram feeds, but take a moment to be proud of your accomplishments and look to the future. Without a doubt, your best is still to come. Thank you. Oh, but you're not done yet. Catherine, please join me. We'd like to present this plaque to commemorate your visit with us today, and also to let you know that we'll be awarding a scholarship under your name this fall in the Lake Sumter State College Foundation. Thank you for your inspiring speech and thank you for your support. Thank you so much. Hello, it is my privilege today to present this year's academic honors. Sigma Beta Delta is our Business and Management International Honor Society for Baccalaureate students. If you are a member of Sigma Beta Delta, please stand and be recognized. Phi Theta Kappa is our International Honor Society for Community Colleges. If you are a member of Phi Theta Kappa, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Students graduating cum laude have earned a cumulative GPA of 3.40 to 3.59. 
If you have earned this distinction, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Students graduating magna cum laude have earned a cumulative GPA of 3.60 to 3.79. If you have earned this distinction, please stand and be recognized. Students graduating summa cum laude have earned a cumulative GPA of 3.80 to 4.0. If you have earned this distinction, please stand and be recognized. The Academic Excellence Awards are presented to students who have maintained a perfect 4.0 GPA. This year, we have 32 students who have earned this prestigious honor. Please stand and remain standing as I call your names. Sean Bartolowitz, Alan Chang Pong, Sophia Colon Rivera, Janessa Dowds, Connie Driver, Gatlin Gray, Victoria Hattabaugh, Hannah Householder, Haley Kelly, Samantha Latham, Kyle LeBlanc, Cynthia Lolly, Christian Lopez, Lauren Mankiewicz, Ruth Martinez Ramirez, Riley Mazeska, Sabrina Mead, Craig Moore, Kristen Oliveri, Sarah Perkins, Garrison Pollard, Gwendolyn Prevett, Justin Schaller, Trevor Sarich, Kayla Schultz, Graylin Skates, Brian Smetters, Ailey Smith, Alexander Tomberlin, Emma Wagner, Tucker Woods, and Nicole Workman. Please proceed to the stage to receive your medallions. President's Award. <clears throat> Each year, the President's Award is given to a graduating student who has demonstrated continuous excellence in academics, has demonstrated effective leadership, has responded to the need needs of others through service to the, to the college and the local community. We had 11 excellent finalists this year. Some of our finalists are attending this cer ceremony, while others attended our South Lake ceremony on Wednesday. Finalist, please stand as your name is called and remain standing. Connie Driver, Maria Gonzalez, Ashley Hall, Carla Mangel, Emily Murphy, and Jeffrey Parody, Jr. Finalist, you may be seated. It was a challenging decision because each of these candidates is so deserving. This year, I selected two winners, one on the South Lake campus and one on the Leesburg campus. 
We presented the South Lake Award on Wednesday. This year's recipients have excelled academically and have exemplified excellence through their involvement in college organizations, commitment to community service, and their dedication to growth within their chosen academic field. I am proud to tell you that the recipient of the Spring 2019 President's Award is Jeffrey Parody Jr. Before I ask Jeffrey to come forward to receive his medallion, I would like to share some of what helped me select him for this award. Earlier today, you heard about many of, many of Jeffrey's college and community involvements, so I'd like to share what Jeffrey has shown, how Jeffrey has shown leadership in the classroom. In the words of one of his faculty, it would be easy to talk about the way that Jeff's perseverance makes him stand out, or how his dedication and grit inspires us. And that would all be true. Watching him pursue his education, despite the myriad of obstacles in his way, is truly remarkable. But I don't want, the ri want to run the risk of creating the impression that Jeff is an exceptional student because of his disability, because that simply isn't true. Jeff is an exceptional student who just happens to have a disability. Jeff may very well be the best writer I have ever had the pleasure of teaching, his intellectual curiosity inspires his fellow students to dig deeper and think more critically. He is the kind of student who makes you feel genuinely lucky to be a teacher. Jeffrey, your future is bright. Congratulations. Please come forward to accept your medallion. I now ask Dr. Weimer, Vice President of Academic Affairs, to come to the podium for the formal presentation of candidates. Will the candidates for graduation please rise? <laughs> Dr. Cedor, I have the honor to present to you the graduating class of 2019. The faculty has determined that these candidates have fulfilled the requirements of the respective Bachelor of Applied Science, Associate in Arts, Associate in Science, Associate in Applied Science, and Technical Certificates, and are therefore qualified to have these degrees and certificates conferred at this time. You may now be seated. It's always disappointing, isn't it? I now ask Amber Carlins to call the candidates forward individually to receive their respective honors. Will the first row of graduates please come forward to receive your degrees or certificates. All remaining students may remain seated until they are directed forward. Carl Lippincott. Sarah Merritt. Christina Canello. 
Danielle Anderson. Matthew Anthony, magna cum laude. Sherry Livingston. Geneva Jones. Cassidy Ryden. Marie Gonzalez, cum laude. Kala Root, cum laude. Elvira Boucher, magna cum laude. Elizabeth Hendricks. Lacey Rubenstein. Mackenzie Reeves. Alicia Bowling. Carson Connell. Jordan Malloy, cum laude. Mary Theobald, cum laude. Nina Underwood. Taylor Dotson. Leslie Walden, cum laude. Benjamin Chance Boyet II, magna cum laude. Connie Driver, summa cum laude. Matthew Coles. Jessalyn Walker. Dawn Horn, summa cum laude. Caleb Drake. Faith Monserrant. Jasmine Kimple. Amanda Barris, cum laude. Cameron Johnson. Emma Gray. Emily Bailey. Jenna Curtis. Elise Geyer, cum laude. Lucia Esposito. Abby Primavera. Gabriela Hernandez. Shelby Childcraut, summa cum laude. Ashlyn Allen, cum laude. Emily Murphy, cum laude. Taylor Turner, cum laude. Hannah Martin. Marilyn Zulaga. Gwendolyn Pravat, summa cum laude. Angelo Canello. Daniel Heitling. Penny Knight. Craig Moore, summa cum laude. Christopher Steed. Bailey Fye. Lauren Genter. Jose Ruiz, magna cum laude. Makila Hawkins, magna cum laude. 
Ruth Martinez Ramirez, summa cum laude. Giselle Perez, summa cum laude. Erica Eisenman, cum laude. Bernadette Navarrete Gonzalez. Tara Mueller. Tafoya Sales Robinson. Courtney Campbell. Anthony Coleman. Louis Mello. Sonia Maya. Lisa Wyant. Tiffany Jones. Samuel Pearl. Juliet Patterson, summa cum laude. Savannah Lee. Caitlin Chiruka. Desiree Patrick, cum laude. Sabrina Mead, summa cum laude. Jessica Madeira. Elizabeth Beltran, cum laude. Jess Almanza. Jesse Almanza, sorry. <laughs> Alex Correa, magna cum laude. Cynthia Lolly, summa cum laude. Trinity El Saba, cum laude. Crystal El Saba. Ocean Hillman, magna cum laude. Mackenzie DeMarco. Sarah Ferguson. James Pancari, magna cum laude. Lauren Cooper, summa cum laude. Bailey Huddle, summa cum laude. Kayla Tassoni, magna cum laude. Brisa Bailon, magna cum laude. Tamarsh Cooper. Gary Hudoff. Emma Kessinger. Tatiana Gavin Carbario. David Wilson Jr., magna cum laude. Caitlin A. Watson. Danielle Arsenault. <laughs> Melissa Soland.
Alexandra Lucier, summa cum laude. Cade Wilson. Colton Ostermeyer. Stephen Van Voorhees, magna cum laude. Tucker Woods, summa cum laude. Saquon Spencer. <laughs> Megan Castro Chavez, cum laude. Derek New, summa cum laude. Garrison Pollard, summa cum laude. Annabelle Larson. Madison Horton, cum laude. W. Anderson Park, cum laude. Madison Resto, cum laude. Brianna Jolly. Madison Steinbrook. Christy Ramos, magna cum laude. Haley Kelly, summa cum laude. Megan Priest, magna cum laude. Skylar Falcon, summa cum laude. Macy Malone. Megan Ayers. Brooklyn Kranz. Benjamin Attaway. Raylan Eversole, magna cum laude. Bryson Holt, magna cum laude. Matthew Reuter. Lauren Saucerman, summa cum laude. Jasmine Marie Benog, summa cum laude. Dominic Madonna, cum laude. Abigail Mantlo, magna cum laude. Graylin Skates, summa cum laude. Christian Lopez, summa cum laude. Jordan Webb. Caitlin Scholl, cum laude. Mackenzie Broder. Alyssa Ruiz. Ryan Graham, summa cum laude. Alan Chanpong, summa cum laude. Benjamin Dinal. Cody Saucier, cum laude. Ailey Smith, summa cum laude. Lynn Carpenter. Alexandria Boots. Cooper Haig, summa cum laude. Juliana Toussaint, summa cum laude. Gabrielle Soto, summa cum laude. <laughs> Paloma Telefort, magna cum laude. 
Amanda Calkins, summa cum laude. Haley Jordan, magna cum laude. Matthew Keith, cum laude. Morangeli Cortez Bao. Keaton Hannon, summa cum laude. Jewel Estrella, cum laude. Kayla Schultz, summa cum laude. Kristen Ives, magna cum laude. Benjamin Brown, magna cum laude. Zach Mitchell. Jacob Rolson. Ashley Hall, cum laude. Carla Mangle. Ava Martin. Brandon Crespo. Billy Irwin. Kurt Campbell, cum laude. Garrett Cudlack. Chad Marletta, cum laude. Brandon Browning, cum laude. Todd Waycaster. Keelan Siebold, cum laude. Dan Wynn. Matthew Truesdale, magna cum laude. Tiana Ramirez, cum laude. Kyler Stumbo. Sarah Kogut. Jeffrey Allard Parody Jr., summa cum laude. Will the candidates for graduation please rise? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the State of Florida, the State Board of Education, and the District Board of Trustees of Lake Sumter State College, I confer upon each of you the appropriate degree or certificate for which you have been recommended with all the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and obligations pertaining thereto. Graduates, you may now move your tassels from the right to the left. Let me be the first to offer my warmest congratulations to you for a successful future. This day signifies a new beginning for each of you. 
because in addition to earning the degrees and certificates conferred upon you, upon you today, you can now call yourselves alumni of Lake Sumter State College, one of the best colleges in the nation. Graduates, please turn and face the audience. Members of the audience, it is my pleasure to introduce the 60th graduating class of Lake Sumter State College. Graduates, please be seated. I'd like to leave you with some words of wisdom from Mark Twain. There are basically two groups of people. The first group accomplishes things. The second group claims to accomplish things. And the first group is less crowded. You are all members of that first, less crowded group that accomplishes things because you have learned that if you're willing to dream, work hard, and collaborate with others, you can accomplish great things. I encourage you to be a guide or a mentor to help another person in, in this world reach this stage. Go forth and challenge someone you know to begin their journey of accomplishment by continuing their education. Graduates, I speak for everyone in this room when I say it has been an honor and a privilege to have shared in this life-changing experience with you. Everyone, please join me one last time in applauding our graduates. After the ceremony, Students and guests are invited to take photos here or in the adjoining spaces. Members of the platform party and many of your faculty will also be available to take photos with you. Please remain in your seats after the recessional. I now invite Mr. John Shea, our faculty marshal, to formally close the ceremony. Mr. Shea. Congratulations, graduates or shall I now say, alumni. It is with great honor that I formally close this, the 60th commencement ceremony of Lake Sumter State College. This concludes our ceremony. The audience is asked to please remain seated until after the recessional. Thank you. Watching the 2019 Spring Commencement Ceremony on Lake Sumter Television. This has been a production of Red Apples Media in partnership with Lake Sumter State College.